Greetings Earthlings! Today's video is about mental health. Specifically, my journey with getting off of pharmaceuticals and graduating from therapy. It's going to be quite different from the usual content that's on my channel, which is usually about van life and travel and more technical stuff. Today's video is going to be about personal development. Hey y'all, so while I was editing my video, I realized that it's going to be way too long than the usual length of videos that I put up. I try to keep them under 10 or 15 minutes and it, there's just so much to cover on this one. Um, so when I say in this video, I mean in this series of videos. And that's even better because that allows me to give each subject the time and attention that it deserves. We're talking about some really important stuff. So yeah, just keep in mind that when I say in this video, I mean this series. So I hope you enjoy. Carry on. I want to share my story because I think it's important to share my perspective, especially as a transgender person of color and a child of immigrants. I've had to endure a lot of bull just to exist. <laughs> but it has served a purpose. All of that adversity has given me a very clear understanding of a lot of the problems that exist in our current contemporary world. But first, a very important message. If you have struggled with mental health, rather than pathologizing the symptoms into a diagnosis, understand that depression, anxiety, distress are all healthy responses to the violence of capitalism, of patriarchy, of racism, and systemic oppression. Those things hurt everyone. No one is spared. The fact that you're experiencing these symptoms is likely because your mind and your body are telling you that there's something wrong, that there's a disorder with its environment. That's it. You can go now. You do not have to watch the rest of this video. If that is the only thing you get from this video, let it be that. Let it sink in. There is nothing wrong with you. You are not crazy. The world around you is literally fucking insane. So, if you're gonna stick around, great. Cause we got a lot to talk about. In this video, I'll be sharing some perspectives, practices, and resources that have helped me develop a better relationship with my mental health. However, what I won't be doing is I won't be discussing really heavy stuff. I'm gonna try to keep this video pretty lighthearted mostly and educational. We won't be getting into what I've heard called capital T trauma, which is often the trauma that causes PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder. Instead, I might go into a little bit um, what I've heard called little t or, or lowercase t trauma, which are like common experiences in general for most, if not all people living in uh, settler colonial states with a, a dominant Western culture, like in the United States. This is especially relevant to those of us who come from communities that have been historically marginalized and targeted. Um, and if you embody, you know, a queer or transgender experience, and you're also black, indigenous, or a person of color, um, I think we have a lot of things stacked against us. Lastly, I am not an expert on mental health. I'm not a psychologist. I am not a therapist. And... Okay, I just have to add, I really need to add this like post-production. I may not be an expert in mental health, but I'm really passionate about learning about psychology and healing, trauma, and personal development. Um, I may not be an expert in that stuff, but I am an expert in my own experience. So take that, self-doubt. Eh. <laughs> Sorry, I just had to add that in there. To be honest, I still struggle with mental health every day. It takes constant upkeep and staying on top of my practices, building that compassionate self-awareness. I hope that sharing my experience and all of the knowledge I've accumulated 
well, help someone out there. Even if I only help just one, just one person out there, just a little tiny bit, you know, that's, that's good enough reason for me to post this video. Thanks for being here. So I've spent the last few years prioritizing my mental health and really digging into the origins of my trauma. I was experimenting with different kinds of therapy, like IFS or internal family systems, dialectic behavioral therapy, like DBT. I even experimented with using plant medicine and doing ceremonies. I did all of this experimenting very intentionally, but when I first started out, I was feeling so lost and just like, I was really unsure if anything would work. And little by little, I started to find things that worked. It takes a while to, to change perspectives, to develop the skills necessary for navigating a society and a culture that is frankly traumatizing for everyone. So I'm here to share that journey with you and also some techniques and resources that I've used to heal myself and spark tremendous growth in my personal development. I also should mention um, some of the reasons why I don't go to therapy. Um, I did go to therapy for many years, but I found that after a while, it just wasn't worth it to me anymore. I found alternatives to therapy, alternative practices, and um, I found that I was just spending a lot of money on going to therapy when I could actually do a lot of the work on in my own and in my own communities. Um, however, I'm not trying to discourage anybody from going to therapy. Um, it just it's not for everyone and my hope is that by sharing some of the perspectives and practices in this video that um, especially if you don't have access to therapy maybe you can use some of the things that I talk about and explore some of the perspectives for yourself. I also want to touch on some of the issues with getting access to therapy in this country and some of the problems that I've experienced and that a lot of people have probably experienced, so let's get into those. So over the past several years, I've used therapy services from a variety of providers, and I've had to navigate the systems and the bureaucracy in order to get the help that I needed. And while I'm grateful that I had access to those things, I also have my critiques of how the system currently works. So in general, there's simply not enough therapists. It's really hard to get appointments and wait lists are really long. And on top of that, there's a big chance that the therapist you get might not be a good fit for you. Most therapists are white and for people of color, it can be really difficult to share deeply vulnerable things and to feel understood and to ask for help from someone who has never had to deal with systemic racism or hate crimes directly or worse, you might have to educate your therapist about these things that they should already know about. And I've had this experience multiple times as both a person of color and as a non-binary transgender person, not being able to be understood. And it can bring up horrible feelings that can actually re-traumatize someone. And don't even get me started on what being misgendered by your therapist can do to your mental health. Then there's a financial aspect. Insurance coverage for therapy is very limited. You might not be able to get coverage, especially if you're on Medicaid or some kind of state-funded or federal uh, funding for health insurance. And without health insurance, the therapy is very expensive. The average starting cost in the area where I'm at is about $125 a session. The clinics that do offer these therapy services to low-income communities have long wait lists, and I've heard of cases of up to two years wait time. It's pretty absurd. And for well-intentioned therapists, it can be difficult to offer their services to low-income communities because of legal and bureaucratic barriers. Where I live, this is a problem for therapists in private practice. Uh, it's really difficult for them to provide affordable health care and therapy to low-income communities because of these barriers. And because the system is a for-profit system, that is not designed to provide affordable health care, but instead prioritizing insurance companies making a profit, the insurance companies are often trying to negate 
patients claims to therapy services and it's just a show and so most private practitioners don't offer services to low-income communities who are on state welfare or Medicaid so all of this combined and not to mention that a lot of clinics have high turnover for their staff clients are constantly having to retell their trauma to a new therapist every time they switch out which is frequently because insurance and whatnot and staff changes so it can be exhausting and of course, I can't ignore how much Western medicine emphasizes using pharmaceuticals in order to treat mental illness. I've had some really bad experiences with psychiatrists being super pushy about getting me on medication. These can have major side effects like changes in your appetite, loss of libido, less energy, brain fog, and even higher risk of depression. I just don't do well being highly medicated, so I mostly stuck to therapy. And a therapist once told me that therapy is not the only path to healing. So... That's it. That sums up my critiques. All right. <clears throat> okay, so let's get into some perspectives. One of my favorite things about having been able to travel and living in my van was getting to experience different beliefs, different ways of living, and different ways of seeing the world through the perspectives of other people. There's a quote by Anthony Bourdain that I really like. It seems that the more places I see and experience, the bigger I realize the world to be. The more I become aware of, the more I realize how relatively little I know of it. How many places I have still to go, how much more there is to learn. In short, he's saying, the more I travel, the less I know. I love that. It's so true. You start to expand your horizons and it can really change the way you, you fundamentally operate. Because a lot of our mental attitude, a lot about the story that we tell ourselves and the beliefs we hold, the underlying fundamental beliefs we hold about our lives are tied to our perspective. So we're going to go into three main perspectives that I have really found beneficial in we're gonna break them down into three main categories. And the first one is Western-based systems like philosophy and psychology. The second is Eastern-based spirituality and philosophy like Tibetan Buddhism. The third is indigenous holistic thinking, indigenous science, indigenous medicine, and also shamanism. And so you might find that some of these really resonate for you, or you might find that some of them are really don't resonate for you. It's very likely that you find a lot of useful content in the Western way of doing things. For me personally, I'm trying to move away from Western modes of, of doing things. I just, systems thinking is very limiting, it's very narrow, and so I find myself leaning more and more into Eastern and Indigenous philosophies for my healing work. And we'll go into that later in the video, but I just wanted to make that distinction that like, this isn't going to work for everybody, and I think it's possible to, to learn from different modalities and also respect the lineages that you're learning from by educating yourself about them. Oh, one last, one last thing, one last message before we wrap up this video. Please respect the lineages that you're learning from, especially those communities that have been historically oppressed by systems of oppression through colonization and imperialism, like in Buddhism and indigenous communities. Some of these lineages have been completely lost over time because of the direct influence of Western imperialism and also Chinese imperialism. So please take the time to educate yourself about these traditions, their culture, their customs, and be open and receptive and always respectful. So much of Western culture is about taking, taking and taking from other cultures in service of yourself. So don't just take things for your own personal benefit. Remember that the ultimate accomplishment of doing personal development work and doing healing work is to not just work on improving things for yourself, but to get well enough and stable enough that you can actually contribute to those around you, to your communities around you. You can extend yourself, your time, your energy, and your attention to causes that are outside of you. The world is literally insane and it desperately needs people like you and I to do our work to heal ourselves and to show up to continue to build a better world. One that is 
a better version of the one that you and I know. A world that is sustainable and nourishing for all beings. So thanks for watching. I hope this was educational, inspiring, motivating. I hope it was helpful. If this was a helpful video, give it a like. I heard that helps the algorithm and it helps me get this content out to more people. And don't forget to subscribe for more content and I'll see you in the next video. Till next time.